town overflows love the only flowering your real being blossoms to its total potential only with love in love and through love love provides the soil as well as love fertilizes and provides the nourishment to consciousness all ambition is against love anything that is against love is against you and your real life your real destiny love and respect yourself and never compromise for anything only then you will be surprised how much growth starts happening on its own accord in every aspect of your life as if all the garden has the season of spring and flowers are blossoming all around just with love and respect a miracle begins to happen as if rocks have been removed and the river has started flowing the soul can grow only in freedom and remember love gives freedom and when you give freedom you are free as well there is no bondage for you indeed that is what detachment is if you enforce bondage on the other you will be in an imprisonment on your own accord bondage of any kind keeps you enslaved with love and freedom the sensual can be transformed into the sublime transform its nature changes quality changes it is like instead of eating junk food you are eating healthy and nourishing food matter can be transformed into mind the unconscious can be transformed into consciousness therefore never condemn anything the attitude of condemnation is the stupid attitude it never gives freedom the real life and its purpose is an effort to make you more conscious otherwise there is no purpose of life why did god create the world this question philosophers ask and the answer comes in in bhagavad gita through krishna when he says i do not have anything to gain in the three worlds nothing there isn't anything which i do not have anything that i am not yet still i engage in action because men follow my path a daughter follows the mother a child a boy follows his father so he has to be the model for the other the real life and purpose is the creator has created the creation and the enjoyment is in creating his creation that's what krishna says i have nothing to do nothing to gain yet still i engage in actions because men follow my path the very word tantra means expansion of awareness and it comes from sanskrit root tan tan means expansion tantra means expansion of consciousness and the basic fact and the most fundamental fact to be remembered is that you are fast asleep you have to be awakened tantra says man can become awake only through group methods through schools tantra means the science of falling in love with existence 
not with any individual in particular in falling in love with someone indirectly and consciously you are falling in love with existence falling in love without any address of any lover falling in love with the whole the unaddressed whole the unmanable whole it contains everything from rocks to stars and certainly one can have a communion with the whole far more deeper than can exist between two individuals two individuals can come to a union only for a moment it is temporary fleeting dream like for one moment it is there and then it is gone when this love this flowering this flowing is not momentary it is flowing constantly like a stream deep within then means that consciousness is expanding and you are falling in love with the existence in fact before you have recognized that it is there it is no more there hence ordinary love ordinary love brings both ecstasy which is momentary and after the ecstasy the dark night the despair the agony both these experiences are so mixed so deeply mixed that people choose either one of the other those who have chosen the first the ecstasy part they believe in love and those who have chosen the other part the agony part they emphasize resurrection of the world but both have come out of the experience of love they are like two sides of the same coin tantra is not a moral concept it is neither moral nor immoral it is a moral beyond the both it is a science and science is neither your moralities and concepts concerning moral behavior are irrelevant for tantra tantra is not concerned with how one should behave it is not concerned with ideas it is concerned basically with what is with what you are this distinction has to be understood deeply morality is concerned with ideals how one should be what should be therefore morality is basically condemning you are never the ideal so you are condemned every morality is guilt creating you can never become the ideal you are always lagging behind the gap will always be there because the ideal is impossible and through morality it becomes even more difficult the ideal is there in the future and you are here as you are and you go on comparing you are never the perfect man something is always missing then you feel guilty you feel a self condemnation tantra is against self condemnation because condemnation can never transform you condemnation can only create hypocrisy then you try to pretend to show that you are what you are not hypocrisy means that you are the real man not the ideal one but you pretend you try to show that you are the ideal one then you have a split within you 
you have a false face. The unreal man is born and Tantra is basically a search for the real man, not for the unreal one. Sex is just the beginning. It is the existential life force, bioenergy, and it is the only energy that is available to you for transformation. But if you miss the beginning, you will miss the end as well. And you cannot escape the beginning to reach the end. So it is very important. It is just like the food is very important for the nourishment of the cells and maintenance of the body. But the food does not mean material as well, but incoming and outgoing breath and so many other things. So it is the beginning. What kind of food are you providing to your body? It will depend on, but you cannot escape that. The quality changes. Instead of junk and non-essential, you start moving to those foods which nourish and nurture every cell of your body. When you take life naturally, not being unreal in any way, you realize that sex is there as a deep possibilities, a great potentiality in any way, use it. And what is wrong in being happy in it? Really, all moralities are against happiness. Someone is happy and you feel something has gone wrong. When somebody is sad, everything seems okay. We live in a neurotic society where everyone is sad. When you are sad, everyone is happy because everyone can sympathize with you. When you are happy, everyone is at a loss. What to do with you? When somebody sympathizes with you, look at his face. The face gleams. A subtle shining comes to the face. He is happy, sympathizing. If you are happy, then there is no possibility for this. Your happiness creates sadness in others. Your unhappiness creates happiness. This is neurotic state. This very foundation seems to be mad. So be real and authentic to yourself. Your happiness is not bad, it is good, it is not sin. Only sadness is sin. Only to be miserable is sin. To be happy is virtue because a happy person will not create unhappiness in others. Only a happy person can be a ground for the happiness of the others. Around him a milieu is created wherein the growth for the happiness becomes possible for the other. Enough for now.